Should you upgrade to macOS Tahoe? That's the question millions of Mac users are probably asking right now. And as someone who used almost every version of macOS, I had to find out for myself. So I installed Tahoe on my MacBook Pro and have been using it daily for some time now. And let me tell you, the truth is more nuanced than you think. The new liquid glass interface might surprise you at first, but it's the new features that makes this a truly useful upgrade. In this video, I'll break down the pros and cons of the most hyped features, what actually works and what doesn't, and share a few performance hacks to help you avoid bugs if you decide to upgrade. At the end of the video, I'll give you my honest opinion. Should you upgrade to macOS Tahoe now? But before I dive in, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Let's start with the most eye-catching change, the new liquid glass design. This gives macOS Tahoe a layered, translucent look, especially around menus, sidebars, and window borders. Honestly, it's more than just a visual upgrade, it made the whole system feel lighter to me, more fluid. After using it for a few days, I went back to Sequoia just to compare, and suddenly, the older macOS felt almost flat. Once you notice the difference, it's kind of hard to unsee, but if you're running an Intel-based Mac, the same layer defect might slow things down. Animations can stutter, and the UI might feel slightly less responsive. This macOS version is also more visually flexible than anything we've had before. There are tons of new color customization options, and yeah, I definitely spent too much time playing around with them. Another nice upgrade is the control center, which is now fully customizable. You can finally rearrange your toggles, hide stuff you don't use, and even add third-party app controls. For me, this made a huge difference. I set it up with quick access to focus modes, airdrop, and my screen recorder, which I use a lot. So just being able to declutter the menu bar feels like a small but meaningful quality of life improvement. That said, there's a flip side. If you go overboard adding too many toggles, the interface can't get cluttered fast. Now, Spotlight Search got a powerful upgrade. You've got native quick action search in categories like apps, files, shortcuts, and clipboard and custom quick key commands. With deeper Apple intelligence integration, you can now summarize content, create automations, or even search smarter across your system. But in my experience, Spotlight's new tricks still feel a little rough, and these improvements may feel limited if you rely on advanced third-party tools. Still, it's a step in the right direction, and I imagine it'll only get better with time. Now, before we get to the last feature, which honestly surprised me the most, there's one thing you want to do if you're thinking about upgrading. Prep your Mac first. Trust me. Every one of these new features pulls more memory, more storage, and more background resources than previous macOS versions. If your system's already a little cluttered, you definitely feel it. So before I made the jump, I ran a few quick maintenance tasks using Clean My Mac just to give my system some breathing room. So I cleared out old system junk, cleaned up leftover app files, and freed up space. Took me under five minutes, it's safe, and the free trial lets you clean up a lot of clutter. The link's below if you wanna try it. Now, the last thing I wanted to talk about, Apple Intelligence, which is now quietly woven into the system. You see it in translations during FaceTime calls, in auto-generated summaries for messages and emails, and even in image generation tools inside native apps. I tested mostly in notes and mail where it could rewrite text or summarize long threads, and yeah, it is impressive. With Apple Intelligence, you can also create more powerful shortcuts than ever, and you can run these shortcuts automatically at a specific time of day or when you take specific actions, like saving a file to a particular folder or connecting to a display. But these features only work fully on Apple Silicon, and even then, you need at least an M1 chip with 16 gigabytes of RAM to get the best experience. Also, many features like image generation and deeper Siri requests are still rolling out. Some won't arrive until mid-2026. So, should you upgrade to macOS Tahoe? If your Mac is compatible and you're not locked into legacy software or hardware, the answer is yes, but only after during some prep. While my upgrade wasn't flawless, I don't regret it. The features are more thoughtful this time around, the OS feels lighter, and most of the points that I talked about were fixable with a quick cleanup and some maintenance. My only advice is, don't rush into it blindly. 
With the right prep and tools like Clean My Mac, you'll likely have a much smoother experience and enjoy the upgrade, not stress over it. If you found this helpful, hit that like and feel free to subscribe because there are more deep dives and Apple updates coming your way. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.